Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. We hope you enjoy listening to this podcast of St. Louis on the Air, brought to you by University College at Washington University. With undergraduate and graduate programs, part-time, evening, and online. University College at Washington University, offering world-class education within reach. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. A native St. Louisan is awaiting the January hometown showing of her latest film, a film likely to get a lot of buzz because it stars Oscar and Nicole Kidman. The film is Destroyer and was directed by Karen Kasama, whose credits include Anne Flux, Jennifer's Body, and The Invitation. She was a Charles Guggenheim Cinema St. Louis Award honoree this year. I had a chance recently to sit down with the Kasama to talk about her film. Destroyer is a crime thriller, a film noir set in Los Angeles about a disgraced L.A. detective played by Nicole Kidman mm-hmm. who finds herself on this odyssey across Los Angeles to reconnect with the remaining members of a criminal gang that she had been placed undercover with 17 years before. People are speaking very highly of, uh, of her performance in this film. Nicole is an amazing artist, an incredible craftsperson, and I, I didn't quite understand going in how, how thoughtful and sensitive she is as, as an actor, and she really plumbed, plumbed the depths of this character. How, how difficult is it to, to sign someone like Nicole Kidman for an independent film? You know, I actually think it's probably pretty difficult, to be honest. Uh, She is an unusually curious actor, and she's willing to read scripts that are out there without without getting an offer even. She just wants to know what's out there and what's interesting and what's current. And so she happened upon my script and, and, to be honest, kind of sought me out because I hadn't really officially started the casting process yet. So she... She just took took a leap uh, and and reached out to me, which is just something I'm forever grateful for. Is there any particular kind of pressure on a director uh, when dealing with someone like that? She's a full fledged, bona fide, certified star. <laughs> she is a movie star with a capital M, and i I do think I do think you. As a director, one has to be aware of the trappings around that because a lot of times the trappings have nothing to do with the person, him or herself. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be aware of the team and sort of all the other demands that might come with being a movie star. But in Mm -hmm. the end, I think the most important thing is to just connect personally and creatively Mm -hmm. with that person and, and, and forge an emotional bond. Where are you in your directing, writing career at this point? Oh, that's such an interesting question. I am trying to figure that out, actually. (laughs) I really um, feel a sense of openness about what the future brings. I I think there's a lot of stuff I want to try. There's a lot of stuff I'm interested in, but I... I find I've been I've been attracted to very dark subject matter mm-hmm. and while I think we live in difficult and dark times and in some respects I'm reflecting the reality I feel around me I'm also looking to explore some more hopeful pockets of of my own interests, but I just haven't quite found them yet. <laughs> Do you think you're on equal f- footing with your male counterparts in this business? It's a very complicated question. Um, as a woman who's been making movies for about 18 years, it's, it's hard for me to know any different than my own experience. Um, it's also difficult for me to say if... If I'm on equal footing, um, I've made very distinct and specific choices. I don't move on to the next project quickly. All of these things are um, part and parcel of the perception of success. And yet I've also been around for almost 20 years, and Mm -hmm. I I do think that stamina has served me well. And I would say in some respects, while I can't – speak to the equal footing part of the question, I can definitely say I hold my own. 
there definitely seems to be a greater representation in your industry today for females in, in roles such as yours. Mm-hmm. I think it's starting to shift. I think at least at, at the very least, we're starting to ask the question ab- about representation and, 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 and more than just talking about wanting to hire more women, I think there are some areas of the business that actually are, which is wonderful. It seemed to me in the uh, International Film Festival that we had in St. Louis uh, several weeks ago that there were a number of women who were involved, and that seemed to me to be quite a departure from previous years. Yeah, I I hope so. I hope the numbers just keep growing and and the work just keeps, um, keeps showing up in front of people at these festivals and in the theaters and on their TV screens. I, I, I do think it's it's slowly changing. With your female counterparts, do you find that you are more competitive or more supportive of each other? Well, I don't think we can have progress if we are competitive, more competitive with one another. I mean, unfortunately, I think the, the dangers and the pitfalls of the system we're already in encourages everyone to be competitive with each other. And that actually doesn't serve... Uh, serve the cause of advancing more interesting stories, more interesting and varied perspectives. It's essential that we are supportive of each other. So for myself, I only think, that, you know, the only way forward is to support each other's work. How did you get into it and why? How did I get into filmmaking? Well, honestly, it in 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 a word, it started at the Tivoli Theater for me. Uh, growing up in St. Louis, I discovered I discovered the the two and three film matinee programming at the Tivoli back when I was a teenager, when it was a repertory theater mm-hmm. and and screening a lot of old movies, and so I just really escaped into into movies, and and the Tivoli was a huge part of that for me. It it connected me to film history I wasn't even aware of. And um, that's really where I got the bug, I think. I mean, it really is that that's where I learned about cinema. Well, you just don't hang out a shingle one day and say, I'm a director, writer, producer, whatever. No. There is a path. (laughs) There is. What was yours like? My path was to go to the undergraduate film program at NYU in New York. And I loved that program at Tisch. And uh, Stayed in New York for about 17 years working for filmmakers and doing all kinds of crazy odd jobs, surrounding myself with a, a, a tribe of artists who who helped feed my art even if they weren't in film. Uh, it was a long journey for me to make my first film. Uh, I was probably almost 10 years out of college, so I, I spent a lot of time absorbing the world before I actually started making films. Why was it a long journey? Were there uh, obstacles, impediments along the way, or, or what? I think so. I mean, I, th- I think it's really hard to give a break to a, to an untested entity, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I was. I, you know, I do think being a, a young woman um, who wasn't particularly savvy with personal politics, all of those kinds of things, I, w- I was always the wallflower at the film events. I wasn't a socially outgoing person, so it was harder for me to sort of represent myself and promote myself. And it just takes a long time to find people to give you money, really. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, it's very competitive in places like New York and Los Angeles. Yes. It's not like St. Louis. Yes, although I would imagine it's just as competitive in a funny way mm-hmm. here because you're still looking for people to put faith in you and give you give you resources. And, mm-hmm. and, and that, that takes a lot of persistence. That's what it's all about in this business, particularly in the independent filmmaking world, isn't it? Money? Yes, it, it really is. Money is such a crucial part of the conversation, and I think that's what's sort of overwhelming for young filmmakers is mm. to imagine how do I get the money. But one interesting new trend is that there are ways to make movies in cheaper and cheaper, uh, cheaper and cheaper models, and so. It seems more possible, actually, that with a good microphone and a couple of interesting lenses applied to an iPhone, you can actually tell a story uh, in a in a pretty creative, resourceful way, and for 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 a low number. But there is still a number. Yes. How do you go about soliciting money? I mean, 
I mean, I'm lucky in that now I've been around long mm-hmm. enough that I can go to studios and I can go to those sort of larger independent financing entities and and talk about my projects. I have enough of a track record to do that. But at the beginning, I think you're pounding the pavement and you're calling and making sure people got your script and you're calling again to see if anyone's read it and you're you're really just trying to stay on top of it and stay kind of like the gnat in everybody's ear that won't go away until somebody pays some attention to you. It, it reminds me a little bit of what politicians have to do. I mean, they have to be on the phone all the time. It's really interesting that you say that because I have been noticing how much politics and the entertainment business are aligned in that it's so much about this dance of, I don't want to say self-promotion, but the promotion of an idea, the promotion of a project, the the promotion of the themes and framing around your work. That is actually very much a part of a filmmaker's life. And uh, obviously, it's a huge part of how politicians have to sure. frame themselves. When you talk about uh, going to someone seeking some sort of financial assistance and you bring a script, what what else do you have to bring with you? Do you have to say, I've got this idea and I'm pretty sure that I can get Nicole Kidman to do it? <laughs> <clears throat> um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm really more aligned with... I do talk about casting in these meetings, and I talk about here's who who I'm interested in. Let's see if we can get to them. Um, it always helps to go to the people you might already know or have a connection to. But I also uh, prepare a really extensive lookbook, and so I put together essentially a kind of snapshot picture of what the movie might look like and feel like with images and words and actors' faces just to give people a sense of here's the kind of movie I want to make. How much um, are entities such as Netflix, Hulu, and Prime yes. doing to the uh, feature film industry? You know, I think it's it's such a good question. We're still trying to answer it. It's a seismic shift, one could argue, um, for the theatrical film end of the business. But at the same time, I think this is a shift we've seen coming for a little while that and and it just reminds all of us who want to 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 see movies in theaters and have our movies seen in movie theaters uh, the old fashioned way it's just a, a reminder of how difficult it is to actually do it and it takes a lot of work to get people into the theaters um for myself i don't know what your viewing habits are but i still like going to movie theaters um and maybe that just makes me of a different generation but um I support that part of the art form a lot more readily than the Netflix and the Hulus and the Amazon Primes, not because I have anything against them, but just because my my mind isn't wired to mm-hmm. watch storytelling in that particular way. That's because none of us is 25 anymore, nope. and we're used to doing it a certain way yes, over, over yes. the years. Aren't we? But don't these resources give you someplace else to go to seek that financial support? Absolutely. There's a whole new <clears throat> world of financing that is available to us that, that has a different model, a different paradigm in terms of how the work might get seen. But um, but yes, it's it's a great opportunity, I think, particularly for younger filmmakers who who want and need more choices in front of them in terms of how they could get their work mm-hmm. out there. I think it's actually an exciting time. And there's a lot of money floating around in, in that world as well. Absolutely. Really. Absolutely. Huge amounts of money. Getting back to uh, your film, um, Again, you had mentioned earlier that uh, Nicole Kidman is getting a lot of rave reviews. Mm. You you have a sort of a history of having female protagonists, mm-hmm. and if my understanding is correct, you also have something of a history of using female, of uh, not only cast members but people behind the scenes. Yes, that that's correct? true. Do you feel you're on any kind of a, a mission in this regard? Um, it's so interesting because for me, I don't really see hiring women in front of and behind the camera as a mission so much as my interest. I'm just interested in seeing interesting women on screen, and I'm really interested with working with all the talented craftspeople who also happen to be female that I can. So so it, it um, for me, I see it as less political and more personal for me. I'm asking these questions about women because it is such a part of the dialogue today, but I'm referring to my notes here. And the uh, 
the performance by Nicole Kidman is being called a badass female cop. Uh huh. Do you have any trouble as a director? Do you think convincing the audience that Nicole Kidman, who's played many different types of roles, yes, uh, can portray that accurately? You know, I think what's interesting about that question is, is that yes, the the surface of that character is is a badass cop, and there are so many complexities and nuances and layers to that character that that's just the first layer, and that's why I think she's doing something so exciting. Is is she nails? the cop part of it, and mm. then there's something even richer and more interesting underneath all of it. But it's the director who has to reveal those layers and peel the layers back. That is true. How do you do that? It's a balancing act between watching and listening and 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 empathizing with the actor in front of you and what he or she is doing and then try, knowing when to try and step in and ask for another perspective, another way of looking at the scene or at the story or at the character's needs in that moment and just steering the actor toward trying something else. The film is out late in the year. Mm. Uh, what part of, uh, of, of your strategy, if it is your strategy, mm. is, is the timing? I'm aware of the fact that a lot of films come out late in the year because they want to attract Oscar attention. Right, right. Um, it's an interesting balance yet again for us to strike because Nicole Kidman is, in fact, doing something extraordinary in the film. I mean, we haven't seen her do this before, and I don't think we've seen many actors, male or female, do what she's doing in this role. Um, personally. That is just my bias. Um, and so, of course, I want her to get the attention she deserves. And I think the film has a beautiful original screenplay written by Phil Hay and Matt Manfredi, who Phil I've worked Hay, with. Phil Hay, your husband. Phil Hay is my husband. Matt Manfredi is his long-term partner as a screenwriter. And so there's a lot of attention I want the film to get because I think that it is within its con- within its cop genre context, it's actually an incredibly sophisticated and, um, I hope, emotionally resonant movie. So yes, I wanted to get that kind of attention, but I also recognize that there's something sort of crazy about horse races and crazy about (laughs) putting your movie in that category. It's a lot of pressure. It doesn't necessarily... I, I don't necessarily know if I can can always sort of embrace this part of the process. It's been a little bit um, tough. What would it mean to you, though, if she were nominated or even won an Oscar for this oh, role? I mean, this is the thing. I, I think for little films like mine, because my movie is still a low-budget feature, um, for Nicole Kidman to get an Oscar nomination is a huge, huge coup for the film. And she deserves it, in my opinion. She should get that attention. But it brings a lot more attention to the film that wouldn't ordinarily be paid to it. Uh, Time is winding down for us, but I do want to ask about the relationship between the director in a film like this and a screenwriter who also happens to be your husband. (laughs) What what sort of pressure does that bring to bear on the process? You know, it's... it's, um, I don't actually look at it as pressure. It's 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 sort of shelter from the storm, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, Matt and Phil have worked together for years and years. Phil and I are married. We have a child together, and it creates a sense of a family and a family unit making movies together. And that's actually a really, for me, um, it feels very. It feels lively and open and trusting and safe to be working in this way where you can really talk, speak openly about the creative work you're doing and, and, and have disagreements and have moments where you push each other harder. It's, um, it's wonderful. We can't deny that moments like that do occur in the best of families. <laughs> right? Yes, right. exactly, exactly. Well, we're all looking forward to seeing Destroyer. It's, Thank uh, you. It's about to open, and uh, best of luck to you and the film and to uh, Nicole Kidman, who maybe has a chance this year. Thank you so much. I so appreciate being here. That's filmmaker Karen Kusama. The native St. Louis filmmaker's latest effort is Destroyer, starring Nicole Kidman. It opens in St. Louis in January. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, 
committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.